Good day everybody and once again we are looking at that paper, uh, the DBE 2021 uh, paper that you recently wrote, uh, just looking at you know our responses and just going through the questions and please uh, I don't want you to stress about it, uh, we're just looking over the questions uh, uh, you know um, for reference, just for reference okay and uh, for those of you who uh, probably will be watching this in the future uh, welcome to our channel and uh, please just don't forget to subscribe and if you are going to be needing any help with mathematics or physical science you're more than welcome to just send us an email uh, you can find us at, at uh, uh, info at mlungisinkosi.co.za all right so we are looking at uh, question three which is based on you know um, a vertical projectile motion Okay, so let's dig right into it. All right, it says a hot air balloon is moving upwards at a constant unknown speed. Uh, just note that it's constant. Okay, um, so the first question is, is the hot air balloon in free fall? Choose from yes or no. Okay, so uh, is it in free fall? No. Um, and our answer, uh, it, that's because remember that the hot air balloon has that engine, right? That's actually uh, pushing it upwards. So in this case, remember free fall, this is uh, uninterrupted motion under the influence of gravitational force as the only force. So in this case, uh, there's more than just gravitational force, there's also the force that's pushing it up. And that's why it is not, uh, the acceleration is actually zero and not 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, so um, remember for 3.1, so remember that our answer in this case will actually be no. Okay, and you can say that uh, uh, the acceleration is not 9.8 meters per second squared, or you can simply state that gravity is not uh, gravitational force. Uh, maybe let's put it that way. Uh, gravitational force... Uh, is not the only force is not the only force acting on the balloon okay right uh, so or you can say that uh, its acceleration uh, is not 9.8 meters per second squared okay right now let's uh, quickly have a look at uh, the next one and by the way there's a similar question that I once did on the uh, you know on the air balloon and objects uh, uh, being dropped out of it okay so the second question says when the balloon is uh, 200 meters above the ground uh, a small stone uh, a is dropped uh, from the balloon Okay, see the diagram above. Uh, another small stone B is dropped five seconds later uh, from the balloon while the balloon is still moving upwards at constant velocity. Right, so um, in this case, uh, they wanted us, uh, oh no, uh, so they say stone A strikes the ground at a speed of 62.68 meters per second. Right, so um they say ignore air resistance of course this is vertical projectile motion okay uh, and they say to us uh, we should calculate the speed of the hot air balloon right so i want you to keep the following in mind remember that uh, we don't know much about the hot air balloon right uh, in a sense that we cannot necessarily deal with the hot air balloon but what we do know is about the objects that, you know, uh, moved outside of the hot air balloon. Uh, in particular here, uh, stone A, uh, which was dropped in this case. Now, please, I want you to note, it does not mean that uh, uh, the, the fact that it's dropped does not mean its initial velocity will be zero. So what will happen is that, remember, initially, as you drop this stone, it will move initially with the same velocity that the air balloon was moving up with. So what's going to happen to this air balloon is that, I mean, uh, to the stone, is that it's not just going to drop down, but it's actually going to go slightly upwards first and then only come back down. Okay, 
So here, when it's actually uh, moving out, its initial velocity here, let's call this position A. So its initial velocity at position A is actually the velocity of the air balloon, okay? But because the air balloon was moving up, that's why this guy initially will start going up first, reach a maximum height, and only then go back to the ground. Now, what we do know is that this displacement here, okay, or in this case, this distance here, is the distance that was given as 200 meters, right? Okay, so um, how can we get the speed of the air balloon? So we can find the initial velocity of stone A. Okay, so what do we know? Uh, we want initial velocity, okay? Uh, we know that the final velocity, oh, by the way, uh, very important, you, we must actually uh, choose a, a direction as positive. If you don't mind, I'm going to choose upwards as positive, okay? I'm going to say direction upwards is positive. Um, so, uh, in this case, it means that, remember that at this point here, when the stone fell, um, it was now moving downwards. So it means my final velocity will be minus 62.68. Please don't forget to do that. Okay, so gravitational acceleration, uh, this is going to be minus 9.8. Why? Because remember, uh, we are considering gravity as, uh, um, you know, it's always moving downwards. In this case, it's always acting rather downwards. Okay, we don't know how long it took uh, for it to fall to the ground. Uh, so if we can call this A, B, let's call this C when it got back to the same position and let's call that posi uh, position D, okay? So uh, in this case, A, B, C and D, so this is maximum height. This is when it started falling, um, uh, I mean uh, going downwards. Uh, so um, we don't know the time it took. Now I'm considering from A till D. Okay, this is the motion of the stone uh, from A till D. Now, we don't know the time that it took, okay? However, what we do know is the total displacement. Now, please remember that from uh, position A up until it got to position D, the straight line change in position between those two points is actually going to be 200, but it's 200 meters downwards. So this is actually also going to be minus 200 meters. Okay, right. Just keep that in mind. Of course, if you chose downwards uh, as positive, all of those values just simply become positive. Okay, so uh, which equation of motion can we use now? We're looking for initial velocity. We don't have time. So the only one without time, we're going to say, okay, uh, Vf squared is equals to Vi squared uh, plus two times a, in this case, I'm just going to say delta y because we're looking at vertical motion, right? Uh, so final velocity, we know that's minus 62.68, okay, squared, uh, which is equals to our vi squared. We're looking for that uh, plus two times our acceleration minus uh, 9.8 and our displacement also minus 200, okay? So all that we need to do now is uh, just try to uh, get those values, okay? So take that to the other side. Now, please keep in mind, remember to put this in brackets when you square it, okay? Right, now let's find our initial velocity. So remember, we're going to have that 62.68 squared, right? Um, Okay, when we multiply that, okay, remember it becomes uh, positive, okay, but when you take it to the other side, it's negative, okay, and we're going to take the square root thereafter. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the final answer. So the final answer that I get uh, after taking the square root is 2.96, okay, meters per second. Now, you must still keep in mind uh, that we need to also assign a direction uh, to this answer. Uh, remember, when you take the square root, you always have plus or minus, uh, but we need to decide, is it going to be positive or negative? So let's talk about the air balloon. Where is it going? Upwards. 
So it means that the, uh, the air balloon is actually moving uh, upwards at a speed of 2.96. Okay, please, uh, you can verify this for me. Um, if I did something wrong, please just uh, put it on the comments. Uh, um, yeah, it's, it's possible sometimes. All right, now uh let's go to the next question so this was 3.2.1 okay let's go to 3.2.2 okay and in this case we're looking at they say calculate the time it takes stone a to strike the ground okay so we're looking at the time that it will take for stone a to strike the ground i mean seeing as we now have the initial velocity uh, the only thing that we didn't have is the time there uh, I might as well, you know, I never, never miss an opportunity to use the first equation because uh, it's the easiest, you know. Uh, and our first equation just simply says v, uh, Vf is equals to Vi uh, plus uh, G delta T. And by the way, if you find this uh, a little bit intimidating, um, you know, um, obviously it means that you haven't watched our uh, our, our, you know, our, our playlist rather on uh, projectile motion, vertical projectile motion. We've got an entire playlist. You can actually have a look at it. I've got a similar question and I discuss it very much in detail. Okay, so um, our final velocity there uh, should be, uh, we said it's minus 68, uh, minus 68 point, uh, sorry, 62 rather, 0.68. Okay, I'm just going to remove that 62.68. Okay, uh, and this is 2.96. Okay, uh, and minus 9.8. And we're looking for the time. Okay, uh, and let's get to our final answer. Of course, we're going to take this to the other side. It becomes negative. Okay. Okay, so uh, you're going to have minus 62.68 uh, minus, okay, when you take it to the other side, uh, subtract that from 2.96 and you divide by negative 9.8 and the time that I get there, uh, I get a time of uh, 6.73, okay, rounding it off, that's the time that I get. So this is the time that it took uh, ball, I mean stone A uh, to get to the ground here. And that is how I would actually obtain that. Right, now the next question, okay. Uh, and I'm sure you guys are stressed a bit when you see that six mark question. It's one of those higher order questions. Okay, so they say calculate the distance between the hot air balloon and stone B right at the instant when stone a strikes the ground okay now i want you to think about it right so stone a strikes the ground after 6.73 seconds and please uh, just verify this for me just to check if uh, uh, you know i'm still on the right track okay so stone a strikes the ground after 6.73 uh, three seconds all right but remember five seconds after uh, stone a was dropped stone b was also dropped okay so in this case when stone a reached the ground how long would stone b have been traveling for if you don't mind i'm just going to make some space here uh, I'm going to continue with the rest of the questions over here. So I want us to, to, to really think about it. So when stone A reached the ground, how long was stone B traveling for, right? So this one reached the ground after 6.73 seconds, right? This uh, stone B was dropped five seconds after stone A. So it means that stone B would have been traveling for... 1.73 so the difference 6.73 minus that five seconds you know that delay okay so in this case it means that the time that um, stone a must have been traveling for must be actually 1.73 seconds 
Okay, now what we're going to do is we want the distance between stone B and uh, the hot air balloon. Now, please remember that when we released stone B, the hot air balloon did not stop moving, right? It kept moving up. So what I'm going to do is let's find out what distance did, you know, the, the hot air balloon move upwards, okay, during the time, uh, you know, as we released stone B. So meaning within this 1.73 seconds, okay, how long did, uh, you know, uh, what distance did the hot air balloon cover? Now, it's very, uh, uh, you know, easy to, to just follow that because if you think about it, we can use this equation of motion at delta y is equals to vi at delta t for the hot air balloon because you know the plus a half a uh, delta t squared would actually now fall off why uh, because the hot air balloon remember it's moving at a constant speed okay so in this case the acceleration of the hot air balloon is zero all right so i hope that makes sense so it means let's calculate the distance there uh, for the hot air balloon so uh, its velocity remember we already found in this case that's 2.96 it was going upwards but how long was it going upwards for it was 1.73 yeah 1.73 seconds okay so uh, let's find that time quickly that's 2.96 uh, times 1.73 um, and I get a distance of 5.1 okay so it moved uh, 5.1 seconds I mean uh, meters upwards okay so that's 5.1 meters upwards okay now um, remember at the same instant as it keeps moving stone B also starts moving right so I want to find out that uh, within the same amount of time what distance would stone B have moved? So now we're looking at uh, stone B, okay? Okay, so let's see. So we know the initial velocity of stone B, okay? We know the time that it took, we know gravitational acceleration. Uh, we're looking for, you know, the, the distance that has been covered. We don't know the final velocity. So I'm going to use actually the um, same equation, delta y, that's vi delta t plus, but in this case, this is under projectile motion. So g delta t squared. Okay, so I'm looking for that displacement there. Um, so remember the initial velocity of stone b was also the same velocity as the balloon so it's going to be 2.96 okay into 1.73 uh, plus 1 over 2 times um, minus 9.8 and 1.73 squared okay right so uh, all we need to do now is just find that uh, remember this is negative 9.8 and time can never be negative okay let's find that displacement quickly and i get an answer of um uh, negative 9.5 and uh, negative 9.54 meters now why do we get a negative answer so it tells us that as the balloon was going up uh, the uh, stone B would have been displaced downwards. Now, I want you to think about it. So, we're looking at the distance between the two. So, it means that as this guy went up 5.1 meters, okay, so let's say that's our reference point here, went up 5.1 meters, this one went down uh, 9.54 meters right um, so in this case uh, what would be our you know our uh, what would be the distance that they are apart can you see that so uh, just forget about you know the you know the signs and all of that we're looking at just the distance between them 
and and remember distance is a scalar quantity so in this case how far are they apart can you see that from that reference point what we'll need to do is just add those two distances that they are apart can you see that okay uh, so it means that the distance between the uh, the balloon and stone a all right will be 9.54 plus 5.1 let's add that quickly uh, so that's 9.54 plus 5.1 okay and I get 14.64 okay um I think I might have rounded off there I'm not too sure uh, so 14.64 roundabout there okay of course uh, um, uh, you can just verify that and if I've left out a decimal or whatever the case is, you can fix that as long as you understand what I've done here. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that is how I would answer that uh, six marks question. Okay. So the distance between the two uh, would have been 14.64. All right. And I hope that makes sense for all of us. Okay. Right. Now let's look at uh, just the last question there. They say on the same set of axes. Okay, draw a position time graph uh, for both the hot air balloon uh, and stone A from the moment the stone is dropped until it strikes the ground. Okay, uh, they say use the ground as, as zero reference. Okay, now when they say use the ground as zero reference, so what I'm going to do, okay, uh, I hope you don't mind, just going to try and squeeze it over here. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is just draw that graph. Okay, so these would be my time axes. So I'm just going to move that a little bit. Um, see, now I'm not even going to have... Uh, remember, this would be position. Uh, you need to label your graph. So this would be position in meters. Uh, this would be time uh, in seconds, right? Now... Uh, what I'm simply going to do is let me just draw the two graphs, you know, in two different colors. All right. So um, let's start with the hot air balloon. How far was the hot air balloon from the ground uh, when stone A was released? It was actually 200 meters from the ground. Now, I want you to actually notice that uh, because this is going to be the, uh, you know, the equation, for the position of the uh, balloon against time remember because it's moving at constant velocity so in that case um, actually I still want to do a proper video on uh, just teaching on graphs okay graphs of motion um, so in this case it would mean that uh, it would actually form a straight line so this would be the graph that represents the hot air balloon it will just keep going up and up and up. And remember that initial time there, I mean, a uh, position would be 200. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's because I'm out of uh, space there. So you would actually uh, say 200 meters there. Um, but uh, let's now draw a graph for, uh, you know, for, for the stone. Uh, in this case, remember that stone A was also with the balloon when it was released. But as I did indicate to you, it's going to go upwards a little bit, okay? And thereafter, only start going down, okay? So uh, your time axis would actually, uh, you know, kind of represent the ground in a sense because they said take the ground as zero reference, okay? Uh, so uh, in this case, it's a parabola uh, because remember that, um, you know, position against time uh, it's proportional to the square there uh, if you look at this equation so this would be a parabola so in this case um, w which time did we know yeah we know the total time so this one would be 6.73 okay and uh, yeah we know that position okay uh, please remember to label your axes it must be time in seconds there uh, position uh, and of course you'd say this is a position against versus time graph okay right uh, and essentially uh, that is how you would have answered this question i hope that uh, i made it make sense okay um 
yeah so if you haven't subscribed please just remember to be part of our family and uh, for those of you who have written this exam already please don't stress if one of the questions was not exactly as you know you didn't approach it in that way uh, exactly i do think though that there is another way that you could have approached that uh, but i i think that the other method i'm thinking about in my head is a bit more can um, cumbersome um yeah but in in nonetheless you you do get the the idea okay all right so i'll see you guys again next time when we do the next question shop shop